Welcome back to Photo Finds. I'm Mikey. And I'm Lauren. And together we will be hosting this week's show. In this episode, our adventures take our viewfinders to the Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, and a quick trip to Epcot. We will also be stopping by Downtown Disney and our usual weekly Potter Watch segment. There may also be one or two surprises along the way. So without any further delay, let's get on with the show. Alright, let's get started at the Magic Kingdom, where I don't know if you've heard already, but inside Casey's, or actually the old dining area inside of Casey's has been redone a little bit. They've taken out the bleachers and the big screen TV and added some tables. Uh, Lauren took these photos. Why don't you tell us what we're looking at right now? This shot was taken looking looking in from the Emporium. As you can see, they have taken away the movie screen and the bleachers, and they've added about 25 or so tables. As you can see, the old door is still there where it used to exit. They haven't changed that at all. And where the TV used to be, it's just a blank red wall now. There's nothing there. It looks like they'll probably hang stuff up or something eventually, right? What, what would you say? I definitely think that it is a very plain wall. They need to put something there, something that will draw the attention away from how boring it is. <laughs> it should also be noted at the time of these photos were taken that the outside dining area was still walled off, so the inside of Casey's might still change in the near future. They've also opened up a new FastPass Plus kiosk in front of PhilharMagic. And then there have also been photos of this already on the internet, but they've put a King Triton, I don't know, what would you call that, a bust? Oh, it's like a statue type of thing. Uh, it's definitely a King Triton photo op. It's next to the new DVC outcove thing by the Little Mermaid attraction across from the Ariel meet and greet. When we went to go see it, there was a pretty long line to take your picture with King Triton, so we didn't have our picture taken with him that day. And kind of jumping on what I did last week, I didn't show you guys completely the wall in front of Liberty Square, or uh, the wall in front of City Hall. And wrapping it up in the Magic Kingdom, the Tomorrowland Terrace, formerly known as the Tomorrowland Noodle Station, or it might still be called the Noodle Station, I don't know, was actually open today. Um, we took a couple photos of the people lined up getting some munchies, some eats. I couldn't exactly see the menu. Lauren, what, what was on the menu? There was a lot of interesting options. They had the normal chicken tenders or chicken nuggets, I should say, with fries. But they also had uh, pasta primavera with shrimp, pasta alfredo with chicken, a lobster roll, things that you wouldn't normally see at a Magic Kingdom quick service location so yeah it was interesting to see that place open and then actually we went into cosmic rays starlight cafe to get a little bite of our own and we saw cast members playing with guests inside the park or inside the restaurant with um window washing fluid i don't know they were, they were playing tic-tac-toe with the guests inside or actually i should say mickey star well X's and O's aren't in the name of Tic-Tac-Toe. But anyway, they were playing Tic-Tac-Toe with Mickey's and Stars as opposed to X's and O's on the window of Starlight Rays, Cosmic Rays, Starlight Cafe. Now I'd like to talk about something a little bit different. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to call this segment, but it's where I'm, I'd like to feature something from any Central Florida theme park that is kind of obviously geared probably maybe towards kids but it can be okay for somebody of any age to either play with or have display in their own home so uh the first item i like to feature in this segment i found at the exit of the mickey mouse meet and greet at the magic kingdom it's called the amazing three-dimensional disney vision as you can see on the package you get six figures it comes with Kermit the Frog, Nemo, Mickey Mouse, Tinkerbell, Woody, and um, take away my nerd card. I can't remember the name of that hitchhiking ghost, but it comes with all six of these figures. And as you can see on the box, it says, you animate the characters, you control the speed, you control the motion. Six built-in LED strobe lights, works in bright light or in the dark, and it 
adjustable tabletop legs. Now, there wasn't one of these unboxed on display, so I'm not exactly sure full on what it does, but looking at this on the box, it looks like you put the figure in this television and with the help of these strobing lights, it looks like the figure moves or floats in midair. And it says four and up on the box, but I'm way past four, even though I may act like I'm five sometimes. But this is something that I wouldn't mind playing with. Just looking at the box, I wouldn't mind having something like this on display in my house. I think it looks kind of cool. So uh, keep a lookout for future ones of these, and I will find some toys or collectibles and other theme parks, and it's okay. You can display it, even though it's for ages four and up. These things are cool. Now let's head on over to downtown Disney, where I had the opportunity for the first time seeing all four food trucks parked in their locations. I've never seen them all before. I don't think you have either, Lauren, have you? Nope. No, she hasn't. So let's start with the Animal Kingdom uh, inspired food truck called the Namaste Cafe. It's located by the World of Disney. Some of their feature items include the slow cooked beef short ribs, uh, tandoori shrimp, and buttered chicken. Is there anything on this food truck that would appease your appetite? All of it. All of it. Uh, out of all three, uh, the three items on this truck, which one would you would you pick first? I like butter and I like chicken. So I guess you go with the butter chicken. I didn't think that you were a fan of shrimp, but um, butter chicken it is. The next food truck would be the Fantasy Fair food truck, and that's located on the other side of the world, the Disney Store. Uh, this features food from the Magic Kingdom, or Magic Kingdom inspired. You have um, hand-dipped corn dog, a glass noodle salad with chicken and pickled vegetables, and how would you say that? Croquet? Let's just call it a croquet. Croquet what? Mon... <laughs> okay, mok, mok, mok. All right, so out of those three items, is, would you try them all, or is there anything that you would not try? That looks like kind of, it looks like a grilled cheese sandwich, probably with ham on it. I don't know. Yeah, I'll pass. All right, we're passing on Fantasyland. The next food truck that we saw, or that I saw, I should say, was located kind of across from... Um, uh, what's the bowling place? Splitsville? Yeah, it was located kind of right across from Spritz, Spritzville, <laughs> Splitsville, and in front of House of Blues a little bit. It was based, or I should say it was Epcot-inspired flair of food offerings called World Showcase of Flavors. The featured items on their menu are, why don't you go ahead and let us know these. Pierogies, wines by the glass, grass fed beef sliders, and a lobster roll. So basically it's food and wine fest um, here on a truck. And let's note the lobster roll price of $18.25. That is, that's got to be a misprint, right? I really hope so because that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, we've gotten that lobster roll at Food and Wine, and I don't think it's been that expensive. Um, it's not worth eighteen twenty five. No, that's for sure. On this truck... I think I know which one you're going to pick, but which one would you like to have first? Besides the wine? Yeah, besides the wine. Pierogies! Of course. Uh, pierogies is always one of our staples that we get every year at the Food and Wine Festival. And then finally, wrapping it up at the Superstar Catering Food Truck. This was kind of to the left of the House of Blues entrance, adjacent to the Cirque du Soleil entrance. And this is all Disney's Hollywood Studios food inspired stuff uh why don't you tell us what we have on this menu spinach and feta beef meatball sandwich turkey sausage and golden raisin meatballs lamb meatball flatbread sandwich so this is obviously the meatball truck this is the meatball truck now <clears throat> let's see how well lauren knows me and what she thinks I would probably get first off this truck before anything else. Obviously, the spinach and feta beef meatball sandwich because of 
the feta. That's correct. I am a big fan of feta cheese. So Lauren is right. Obviously. Obviously. And jumping on over to Epcot really fast, they had this limited run show, which actually ended a couple days before this recording. It ended on February 21st, and it was only there for the week prior to that. Science Thrills Live, presented by Raytheon. This was a uh, show, it was a 20-minute show inside Interventions um, at Epcot. It was interactive. Uh, it was supposed to be scientists demonstrating triggered eruptions like exploding soda, melting milk jugs, all this kind of stuff. I don't know, some scientific uh, Mr. Wizard kind of stuff. But I didn't get to see the show, but here's a sign advertising the show outside of Interventions at Epcot. And then also walking through Future World, we see further preparation for the Flower and Garden Festival. The butterfly caged area is almost complete, and other construction walls with that playground being built are still up. And also more topiaries have started to pop up in World Showcase. You have the uh, Lady and the Tramp in Italy, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs over in Germany, the Princesses at the entryway to France, and uh, it seems like it's a lot of the same ones that we see year in and year out, so we'll probably see the Peter Pan and Captain Hook one popping up in the United Kingdom shortly, as well as other favorites from year to year. I did make a really quick solo trip over to Disney's Animal Kingdom this week, and the first thing I saw that I've never seen before was this Wilderness Explorers headquarters. It's kind of on that bridge on the right when you first walk into Animal Kingdom when you have the Tree of Life right in front of you. Uh, they swear you in, and you get a map, and you go off on an adventure. And I guess I, I didn't do it. I didn't take the, the challenge, but I assume you get some sort of badges at, at the very end when you're done and also scattered throughout the park I've only saw I only saw this one this artifact from up which was kind of in front of it's tough to be a bug's queue line it's um Barkolator it's got this label on it uh signed by Russell uh you can push that button bark into there and it says some can saying out in that other speaker so these are things that i've never seen before at disney's animal kingdom as well as a couple of these construction walls uh here's a farther from another bridge so you can see past that construction wall and somebody told me that that is actually avatar land being built back behind that dawa bar construction wall area and now we're going to try a little game where I'm going to show Mikey a photo of something that's really zoomed in and he can't really tell what it is and he's going to try and guess exactly what it is and where it is and what park it's located in. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Let's see what you got. Okay, first off. Oh, the attention to detail there is just absolutely amazing. Uh... <laughs> That's got to be in Disney somewhere. I would have to guess probably the Magic Kingdom in New Fantasyland at the Castle Wall expansion thing. Am I right? You are correct, sir. That was easy. All right. How about a little bit more difficult? And obviously, I respectfully beg to differ, sign Seymour Skinner, Principal, this is from somewhere in Springfield at Universal. Um, I would say probably near the Quickie Mart somewhere. Or, yeah, I'm going with the Quickie Mart in Springfield. Went wrong way. Uh, and the answer is... Is that the Quickie Mart? Yeah, that's the Quickie Mart. All right, awesome. Well, it's actually to the left of the Quickie Mart. And the funny thing is I didn't realize it, but if you are standing there and that phone where he says, answer the, the phone, dingus, it's for you, the phone actually rings. I had no idea. I did not know that. Well, neither did I. And when I went to try and pick it up, some little girl cut me off. <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> what they say to you. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go stand by that phone and uh, check it out. Well, that was a good one. That was that was kind of challenging. Do you have any more? I do. Uh, this one, 
It looks like it says Barty's Bolorama on it. So this is obviously from Universal again, and it's either in Barney's play area, the, the purple dinosaur, or this is Barney from The Simpsons. But I know that that looks like kind of like a bumper sticker. So I'm going to guess that it's a bumper sticker uh the Simpsons RV trailer thing that's parked out in the park. Am I right? You are correct, sir. Yes, I am three for three. Well, that was pretty fun. Uh, next week, I'm going to be the one to show Lauren some pictures and see if she's going to be able to uh, guess where I've taken them from. Uh, what should we call this segment? Photo mystery finds. <laughs> Photo mystery finds? Uh, what do you guys think? Send us your suggestions on what we should call this segment. Uh, tweet us at just Mikey HRC or Lil Lauren ninety nine. That's L I L L A U R E N ninety nine on Twitter. And finally, heading over to Universal Orlando. All the major updates are coming out of CityWalk, I guess. It looks like the Cold Stone Creamery and Starbucks locations are almost ready to go. It looks like the whole front area is going to be some sort of brickwork for Starbucks. And then the Cold Stone, you have your basic sliding glass doors with this red awning. And I bet that Cold Stone sign is probably going to go up any time within the next couple of days now. And going on to Potter Watch, there's not much to talk about inside the parks. This is over at the Islands of Adventure side. You can see that spire and other rock, rock work coming in on the South Station. And then here are your peaks into the San Fran Peak Window. And then over to the Fear Factor Peak Window. Other than that, not much to take photos of this week besides your normal Mardi Gras characters. But here are some of my favorite shots that I took inside the Universal Parks this week. Well, all right. I think that about does it for us this week here at Photo Finds. We hope you enjoy the show. If you have any suggestions of things you'd like to see in an upcoming episode, feel free to tweet at us at our Twitter handles shown below. Uh, Lauren, you got anything to say? Nope. Nothing? Hope you enjoyed our new format. Yeah, all right. And please remember that both sides are open. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>